Amanda here with Homeschool and Life, and Lauren and I are so glad that you have visited our channel. So today, I just kind of wanted to talk about like a like a mid-year update. I guess we're a little over halfway, but just kind of an update of how things are going, what things were changing, what things were keeping the same, and um, kind of this time of year. Um, so sorry, I said um a lot, but. Here we go, just kind of wanted to share, maybe this will help you and your stuff. But something that we have changed is our book basket time. Now, I love that time. That's the time in our family where the whole family comes together and that's where we do our um, Bible reading as a family, any kind of hymn study, any of the neat extra stuff we do, our science, our history, if we have a read aloud. And um, it take, our book basket time does take a long time, but my kids have gotten, you know, they're all in their sports practices because we homeschool yet they play sports up at the school and so we're running back and forth to practices. Um, my oldest two, their math has gotten a little bit more difficult. So, and it takes them a little bit longer during the day to get that done. So they have expressed about how like when I go way too long on book basket or morning basket, whatever you want to call it, time, that it it's stressful for them. So I kind of tried to listen, and so I kind of wrote down like what time we start school, how long it takes them to do something, how long they're gone at practice, and they were right. If I spend too long on our book basket time, it really doesn't leave a lot of time for them to get some of the other things I want them to get done and get done well. So... And we've tried different things um, as we've, we used to, like with our book basket time, like it used to always be the same time in the morning. And then when one kid, you know, their sports practice was at that time, we changed it to a different time. So we're having to adjust with our new, I guess, schedule with everybody's activities. And so this year we've done a few different things where we've tried at 8 o'clock we started or at 8.30 we do it or we, you know, started at this time. Um... But anyways, it goes back to them just expressing that it kind of overwhelms them because it's too long. Now, again, I told you I wrote it down. They were right. Um, just mathematically, when you figure out how much time they're having for something. So, here's the change that we've, that we've done this half of the year that's actually working really well. I get one hour. <laughs> one hour is all I get. So, I've and I have to start it at the same time every day. And they know because part of the problem was... Um, you know, it'd be like time for that book, the book basket part of our day, but one kid's not done with math. And so we like wait a little bit and another kid's not done with this. And we wait a little bit and, um, it just kind of, it kind of got us off routine at the beginning of the year. I would play, we had a book basket song. It was actually, here comes the sun by the Beatles. As soon as I played that song, whatever anybody was doing, like they, it was three minutes and 11 seconds, the version that we were playing on YouTube or whatever, they had that long to get, um, all their book basket materials ready and get to the living room. Anyways, as the year went on, you know, like I'd push it back, just like I said, so it was causing an issue. So anyways, at semester, we were like, okay, what can we do? And they all asked me to make it shorter. So that's where we came up with the one hour limit. So in that one hour, I get, I get them to do whatever I want. The family Bible, the hymns, our history, science, whatever, however I'm looping it, poem reading. Um, and so what I learned is I have a hard time fitting all my stuff into an hour. So it's actually been really good for me because I'm being more intentional with what I'm choosing to do. I've got some staples that I do do every day in that. And then I've got some stuff that I just loop in. So now we're not doing a poem reading every day. And every day we don't do a hymn. And every day I don't get to do the extra stuff I want to do. But I'm having to pick and choose, which I think is more beneficial for them in their time management. And it's more, you know, beneficial for me as a teacher because it's making me be more intentional. And so changing book basket to one hour has been a positive change. Um, and just realizing that some stuff is not going to get done and you just move on and you pick up the next day. And this is company. So last week we had a rare day where nobody had anything. And I was telling the kids, I'm like, this is like the old days, you know, like when they were younger. And so I got to do my book basket time longer and I went like over way over an hour, like an hour and a half and I could have still been going. So limiting book basket to one hour, perfect change. Um, in one of our videos, oh, I can't remember which one it was, but Lauren just talked about, um, 
you know, keeping that time short, simple, and sweet and keeping their attention spans. And so that's been helped. So one change that we've made. Um, another change is this is kind of a growing pain change. Um, I'm real big on read alouds. I like the, I really like the literature portion of our homeschool. I like the books that we read together and talk about. And I've read, you know, lots of other families who do read alouds all the way up until their kids graduate and just how important that is for kids to have, um, you know, being read to aloud. It is not working in our house. Um, and, and it's just with our schedule. Again, I've written down, you know, like, okay, what's going on? And so I, there's no time for me to do a read aloud with my older ones, my, you know, junior high um, age because of the flow of the day and their sports practice. So one change that I've made is I have just let the read aloud to the olders go. That's just as much as I wanted to keep it and hang on to it. It's just a change, a growing pain, growing change that had to be let go. And it's okay. I am, it's actually working out for the better. I am getting to go back and reread some of the um, fun chapter books to my younger ones and getting to enjoy them more, which is uh, better for them, better for me. And so my older ones, I am just, um, they're doing just their own reading. It's, um, and it's okay. It's, it's a change that had to happen and um, I, it's okay that I'm not getting to hang on to what I wanted. So that might seem minor, but it took me, it took me several months to accept that change because that was one of the things that we did during our morning basket time and that is no longer there. So my big kids no longer have to sit in to any book I want to read and they're happier. I may not be happier, but it does work better for our schedule. And so I just, you know, let them read a lot of what they want, but then I also assign some biographies and good literature just to make sure they're still doing that. And with that, um, if you followed us at all, you would know that Lauren and I started the um, book club with our teenagers, and that's so they can read their harder literature and then have somebody to discuss it with. So that's kind of how that's changed. No more read alouds for the big ones. Um, let's see, what else? Um, we do, I haven't shared this before, but I have been doing this. Uh, this is my daughter's name and it says eighth grade on it. I think I have one of these saved on my computer from her, like maybe second or third grade. I started this a long time ago where I have the days and I have their subjects. And so, um, just one, and they each have them each week. And I know like you necessarily shouldn't teach off of a list, but because I've got the kids doing so many different things, um, they just get their list out every week, and it just helps me to stay on track of what they're doing. So one of the changes I've made on this is I have changed how many days they do something. Like um, like right here on hers, it says Spanish, and I changed it to only four days a week because um, that's all that's necessary. And then, so, uh, like, this is one of mine that's in fourth grade. He has the most subjects, but it's because, like, you have cursive writing on here and flashcards on here and cursive copy work and just all this extra stuff and um, typing tutor. So I've changed it to where I've put on there like how many days a week I want them to do that. And so it is just, um, it makes it less overwhelming for them to see this list. And this is just a good tool to help us do things. Um, another mid, mid-year-ish update would be our research projects. We are now working on our research projects. Um, we do this every year. So basically what that looks like is each kid picks a topic and they write a paper about it and then they prepare a visual aid. And Lauren and I, we get the kids together and we invite, you know, grandparents, friends, family. We have snacks. We try to make it a very formal-ish <laughs> ish special event and have the kids speak out loud. So kind of telling about their stuff. So that's in full swing at our house right now. Everybody's working on their research projects. So how I have made that change is we have quit doing our IEW writing. If you've listened to many of my videos on curriculum, like recommendations, you know I'm an IEW fan, love IEW. I think it's awesome for teaching writing. But just to not be overwhelming, we are putting that all to the side and we're taking a lot of those concepts that we've learned and so we're now putting that into making our outlines for our research project and working on a bibliography. And so the kids are just going a lot deeper into everything they picked. And so I have to um, find a way in our schedule to make more time for them to be able to do that and to do good work. So that's what we've done. We've, we're putting a pause on our IW. They're still writing, but it's for the research paper. Um, it's actually been really fun to watch because 
nobody nobody ever really likes doing it, but as they've gotten into it, each person has in, is enjoying their topic, so they're like really diving down deep into it. So it's kind of a mid-ish year. Um, the reason we've kind of started it in January, February-ish is because Lauren and I, when we try to get together in the end of the school year, May, to do these um, presentations, we struggle to find a date just between all of the end of year, beginning of summer, baseball activities, all of her boys play, some of my boys play, and so just finding a date. So we both said we're going to do it earlier in the year, and that way our final presentations will actually be um, presented before we're done with school. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, let's see. I made a list to tell you some of our updates. Oh, so I asked my kids, what do you want to stay the same? What do you like about um, the flow of our day? And they all, minus-ish one, had the same answer. I pick my oldest up from practice about, oh, 2.05 in the afternoon. And so, when she comes home, we have reading time, and that's where everybody gets a snack, and they sit down, and we set a timer for 45 minutes, and everybody reads. Um, so it's just like a peaceful calm in our day, and you know, because when we were going over what's stressing you out, what's what can I do to help make it better, they wanted to keep that time the same. So it's like, it's almost like equivalent to when they were really young and you had a nap time or quiet time. I think everybody looks forward to that calm and that peace of the reading. So um, it's actually a very nice part of our day. And we haven't got to do that all year because some parts of the year we're having to leave early for ball games or, you know, cross country meet. But this time of year, um, you know, more towards as the winter's gone on, we've been able to do that. So that's a staple that we're keeping for a mid-year update, and I think everybody likes it. So um, another change that I'm having to make um, is we're having to eat dinner later so I can lift weights. Um, I have like I've been more of a person that I like to eat dinner a little bit earlier because I like to get the kitchen cleaned up and everything and have more time in the evening to hang out with the family. But as the kids are gotten older, the school days are taking longer, and there's just more stuff and more places we have to be. Um, I know it sounds like such a silly little change, but it was an adjustment to eat later to take that stress off of having dinner ready early. Because I'm already getting up in the morning and running, and then I um, have to be back, you know, early to start the school day with the kids. And then just because the way the afternoons works, I haven't been able to lift strength train until basically after our school day is over, which is push the day later. And just accepting that has been um, mentally beneficial for our school. So having dinners later to make sure that I can strength train because um, Lauren and I both have talked about it, like just your health and your physical fitness and just mental health because of the nutrition and just exercise is just so important. So we're eating later dinners to try to fit everything in. They, I guess that we're in a big transition time. You know, every season is different, but moving from, you know, smallers or mid to having, you know, older ones who have all these activities, middle ones who have these activities and still trying to balance, you know, a younger one as well. So just kind of the saying I've got in my head is adjust, don't abandon, meaning um, just... I feel like, you know, God equips us to, you know, serve our families. And so I'm just having to adjust and figure out what works and what doesn't work instead of abandoning all the things that I like and want. Kind of like with the read aloud and with the elders. I'm adjusting, you know, having them read their own where I'm reading one too and we're discussing. We're actually reading To Kill a Mockingbird together right now. But I'm not abandoning, you know, what is important to me. Such as now we're having later dinners. Um... Oh, here's another one. So my kids are all plenty big enough, even my seven-year-old, to cook a breakfast all by themselves. Everybody can do their own breakfast. I typically don't cook breakfast except for once a week. Um, that actually came from, you know, one of those, you know, talks with the kids, and that's something they liked. But, like I've already said, I'm out running in the morning, so when I get home, um, you know, I'm ready to start the school day because I don't get home until it's about time to start. And so, one change that we've made to make, you know, just the attitudes good and everything is my husband has been getting up early because he has to be at work early. He leaves about 7 or so and cooking breakfast for the kids several days a week. Now, not every day, but most days a week. And even though they're capable, they know how, they can. It's just been a good, positive change 
um, just for attitude and atmosphere to start the day. Well, and he obviously needs to eat anyway. So they've been having like a special time where it's just him and the kids eating good breakfast together before he leaves for his work day. And then when I come home, they've had a nicer breakfast than that somebody made for them. Um, not necessary change, but it has been a positive change. So I'm constantly telling him thank you and how it's really like just changed the atmosphere of the day. Because the rule was before... Everybody had to have their breakfast made, cleaned up, chores done, everything by 8. And I think it just kind of, you know, put a little bit of a damper on the day sometimes, just every day. And so just, it's just been a nice treat. So, uh, let me look at my list here. So, I don't, I'm sure there's more stuff. But, anyways, those are just some changes um, that we've made. A couple of things that we have kept the same and... Uh, just I guess the point of this video is to encourage you like even if things are hard or not going well in a certain way just get creative and figure out okay what will work for my family in this season and the, the season may not be you know August to May it might be like a two-month season where you know you guys have some extra activity going on or a this month season and so I have and still am learning to adjust and just do things that work well with us so but I guess the biggest change has been making myself only have book basket for one hour and be more intentional with what I choose to do during that time and to also respect the fact that they need time to get their other stuff done since they have so much going on. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this mid-ish, over mid-ish year update. And if you, this content is helpful to you at all, I would love it if you would like this video. It takes no effort like click and then um if you really like this content lauren and i would love it if you subscribe to our channel if there's something you want to know about either one of our homeschools how we do things or a question we love answering those so just hit subscribe send us a message and thank you so much for watching